All right, we're back with uh, another episode of I'm in a Car. And I have the honor of having our uh, Chief of Police, Jeff DeRuiter, with us today. So thanks so much for doing this. Well, it's great to be here and out, out on patrol. Out on patrol, yeah. Cool. I'm patrolling. This is crazy. I kind of feel weird about it. Um, I, I, I made a promise that I'm going to do my best for no rolling stops and I'm going to make sure I adhere to all of our traffic laws. So thank you very much for keeping me on point. Uh, but no, but seriously, um, I'm over the moon that you decided to, to be part of this and, and I'm, I'm really excited to kind of hear what you have to say about a whole bunch of stuff, specifically around leadership. Uh, but before maybe we get into it, in kind of classic I'm in a car fashion, can you give us a quick little rundown of kind of where you've come from and how you ended up is being chief of police for our awesome community? Yeah, absolutely. I, I just had my 34th anniversary in police unit with the Guelph Police uh, just this past week. Congratulations. Um, and so my my journey, I've always been in Guelph. I came to Guelph for the job. I'm a Burlington boy and came here for a job and uh, started as many of us did as a patrol officer yeah. and over that time uh, different opportunities, spent a lot of time in investigations and different supervisory and management positions and um, really just sort of evolved. I, I didn't get in the police scene to be the chief and in some ways it, it worked out and that's probably you know part of my leadership journey part of the uh, in reflection at 34 years um, you know how I got to where I am and and some of the things that uh, I would have done differently are you know are pretty clear to me yeah yeah yes. all right cool so 34 years didn't really see from the beginning that you police was the destination but here you are uh, what's it what's the ride been like like you've been chief police for what three years three four? three years I was interim um, September 14 so okay uh, so almost four years September, and so how how is it treating you? What's it like? I mean, I can only imagine the stage. Like everybody's looking, what's the chief of police doing? You really you're kind of on a public public stage. It's interesting, and and so when I got into this, it um, you know it took a lot of soul searching and, and a lot of discussions. Um, I'm sure, I wanted to get into this, and the things that probably I thought I would have been less comfortable with have been the things that, that I really enjoyed. And I mean, I really enjoy our community and the opportunity get out into the community and it really what kind of uh, you know picks me up at time I mean leadership can be difficult and you deal with a lot of challenging situations but I mean, we have a tremendous community and in a policing we're very fortunate in Guelph specifically the support we have in our community for what we do and it just just the opportunity to get out into our diverse community um, and just to see the wonderful things and the exposure to really what makes Guelph run you know, just amazing whether it's volunteerism whether just the commitment people have to make Guelph a city that it is. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I came to, I came to Guelph from Whistler, BC, and I was like, I gotta go to Guelph because I had to go to school. I was done, you know, serving food. I had to get educated, and I was like, oh man, Guelph. Like I'd never been, and I ended up getting here, and in like a week, I fell in love with the campus, and then fell in love with the city, and then I found out about. Guelph Lake and the trails and then I found out about everything around here and it was just like I don't know I haven't left right you know that was 2004 so it was 14 years I don't think I can call myself a Guelphite yet but I'm getting there and I'm certainly a Guelphite uh, yeah, I mean it's home I raised my family here and it, it is yeah, it is home cool so going back to this leadership thing I mean as far as I'm concerned everything success rise and falls on, on leadership and one of the things we were kind of talking about before we got into the car was just like, you know, I really see leadership as a, it starts inward and then it kind of cascades outward. So what are some of the things or one or two things that you keep in mind when, when leading yourself uh, now that you're in this position where, you know, eyes are on you, right? Like, I mean, people are looking to you, seeing how you're responding to situations, all that kind of stuff. So what kind of things do you keep in mind to, to lead yourself? It... You know, I think what's important to me is really to be true to myself, and I think some of it's my upbringing is, um, and I hope that I have really maintained, in many ways, I am the same person now than I was 34 years ago, and um, why many of us get into policing is about service, and to continue on with that, and and to try to get that across to our members as well, that we exist because the community allows us to exist, and, and uh, be 
being ethical in your decisions, being fair, being reasonable, but at the end of the day, it's about service and the quality of service. And, and that, we strive for excellence in, in what we do. You know, and I think just humility is something that I think is, you know, really was ingrained in me and, and just trying to really be humble and, um, you know, the success our service has, it's, it's because of the team effort and likewise, the opportunities I've had, it's because supportive characters around me and um, to really, you know, appreciate the team and that it takes a contribution to so many to uh, be positive and try to create an environment that is, uh, people can flourish yeah cool so on that note from you know leading yourself and uh, I think there's a lot of value in an idea of humility and I'd love to come back to that in a minute but as you kind of touched on this idea of creating this uh, first of all being aware that it's a team effort but then create an environment where people can, on a team can flourish what kind of things do you do as a leader like what kind of things do you put in place what mechanisms are you using to really create that environment so in it I mean the police scene Profession. It's a, still a paramilitary organization, and um, at the end of the day, the buck to stop with me. But really, trying to encourage and work with people as they're growing in their leadership to um, be empowered to make decisions, um, to give them feedback, but to help them to figure out how to work through an issue and to help them develop. And you know, it's really through trial and error and some of the mistakes where we we really learn. Really encouraging people to learn from others around them giving them opportunities to um, you know, be a part of a team where they can can learn from others. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so it, it really, it's, um, I think that empowerment, and uh, I've had some great opportunities given my way, whether it's working in various units or in leadership, and just um, trying to create that environment where other people want that or where it's looked at as desirable for other people as well. Because um, at times, there's challenges with leadership, but it's something yeah. that yeah, we've, we've got to continue to, to strive and um, you know take on new challenges. It's easy to come every day, punch in, punch out, but to, to say, let's take on some new opportunities and um, push the needle. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So you, I don't know if everybody caught this, but uh, the first kind of four responses you just brought up were, as far as I'm concerned, conversations all on their own. Like one of them, the idea of creating an environment where people are empowered to make decisions. Uh, I mean, I feel like we could have a whole episode on that idea. Uh, the other one was around uh, coaching through, coaching people through their their own thought processes and giving them an opportunity to make their own decisions. And I, I it's been, that's been topical for me. And I think it's something that would be really neat if we could dig on that one just for a quick second, uh, because I feel like a lot of leaders face this where. Uh, I have an open door policy um, simply because I don't have a door. <laughs> we, live, we work in a very open environment. And, and I know a lot of other leaders kind of have a similar approach where they're accessible, they're approachable. But that can kind of turn into this, hey, you got a minute, got a minute, got a minute. And no one's trying to do anything malicious, um, but it creates this environment where, and leaders typically do it to themselves, where they have the answer to all the problems. And then so people kind of turn into a habit of behavior where they're saying, what should I do, what should I do, what should I do? So, what kind of things have you done with your team to coach them through making their own decisions and, and thinking through their own problems so that that kind of stuff isn't happening as much as possible? Absolutely. You know, I think in policing we have a lot of talk about our mid-managers that are the most influential in our organization and the influence they have on, on the constables. Um, and really trying to work with our senior managers to instill that in our staff sergeants, our sergeants to um, to lead, you know, so to ensure the organizational and my values are shared with the organization and that those are followed through um, and, you know, our commitment to those organizational values. I do have an open door policy. I was kind of joking about that uh, just yesterday and and, you know, at times I do have to close the door, but I, I do think it's important to um, to help people to work through these issues and and not just to take on the problem, say, how can, you know, what do you think you should do? What, you know, how should we work through this? And, and really at, at all levels is to not just be stuck with the problem, but, you know, what is the solution that goes along with it? Right. So, I, I mean, I'm under the impression that... Uh, 
police officers get trained pretty well on how to lead through situations with questions. Is that fair? It, it is. I mean, certainly in policing, I think the training, it, it is really, in many ways, it's about um, various competencies. It um, might be on certain legislation. Um, you know, leadership is one that is at times a little more difficult to to train on. I mean, we have various courses and we continue to look at new opportunities because, again, it doesn't have to be police leadership. It's right. clear no, leadership is leadership. Big time. Um, and, but do you guys get folks, sorry, I'm, yeah. everybody have an opportunity or get trained on how to facilitate situations through questions? Like, is there anything like that? I'm, the reason I'm asking this question um, is I found it really helpful for coaching and I find like you know, it's it, it's really difficult sometimes to state an opinion without having all the information. And, and I, know I've, I have some near dear friends that are yeah. police officers, and they're really good questioners, yeah. like really good, and like calm and cool, and just trying to figure stuff out. And then once they got it all, they're like, "Yeah, and have you thought about this?" You yeah, know? absolutely. And I mean, so one of the things with police are so often dealing with people's problems. And I remember as a young officer, you go in and you didn't have a lot of life experience. I was 21 when I started. And it's, <laughs> it's going in and telling families how to raise their children when you didn't have children. But it really is um, in the dialogue and the questions and, and kind of working through and um, you know, kind of in some ways the de-escalation. At times the emotion obviously causes the police to get involved. So, right. um we do ask a lot of questions, you know, yeah. Joker, and I'll ask the questions here. Um, and we, you know, many of us, I think, would rather talk to other people about the issues than, you know, talk about ourselves, which, sure. is, which is very handy when you're asking questions, because you're getting a lot of information from others. Yeah. Uh, but there's also that balance at times, and, and strategically, of sharing some information and rapport building with, um, you know, about yourself, that, that helps. Sure, in, absolutely. In, in, yeah. And so do you, do you use questions at all when coaching people through their own problems? A absolutely. And we see that in our, uh, when our new recruits and we have a coaching process and, and you know, the strategies on how you, you know, you show them and then you have them do it. And it really in the feedback and the questioning. And so good coaches, I think, are really good at getting the recruits to understand why they're doing it and getting them to lead. And, you know, many times they know the right thing, but getting them to articulate it. Right, right. That. That's cool. And I think it's really important, and I, I, especially in leadership at all capacities, whether it's policing, whether it's business, whether it's family, because um, we all, like, people are inherently competent, skilled, smart people, and I think we just got to create that environment where they can articulate the thoughts they have and give them the time and the space so that they can come out with their own ideas. You know, in policing, we really do focus a lot on articulation because, I mean, so many things, ultimately, it's in core, and it's not only doing the right thing, but also that you articulate why you did what you did. Um, So, so articulate ba based on on the law, based on the authorities. So I, I was yeah. pausing there because I thought maybe the railway I crossing. I, I yeah. thought maybe I didn't do the railway crossing no. properly, and you were gonna like pull like me pull like me your, over. Like your driver's <laughs> exam here, I got the clipboard <laughs> out, and I give you the results, and we stop. How am I doing? Yeah, hey, you're doing okay so far. Okay, Whew. I've been conscious. So anyway, <laughs> no, that's yeah, it's really important. And, and you know, I I found that uh, some people um, I've worked with had experiences with. Aren't you concerned with, you know, the specific vocabulary they use and how they show up and that kind of stuff? And they kind of think like, well, you know, it's not that significant. And then there's other people, and I kind of fall in this boat more, where I'm very conscious of the vocabulary I'm using because I know that interpretation and different words can evoke different emotions and that kind of stuff. So I think that idea of helping people articulate really well is really, really important. So that's neat. And where that's really important as well with citizens, because oftentimes people are in a level of distress or they're... Um, having difficulty with the situation and the words that we use are so important and they can cause something to go in a positive way or it can, it can turn up with the opposite uh, in a negative way. Yeah, big time. And it doesn't take a lot. So then you, you were talking about this idea of uh, instilling not only the, the cultural and core values of the precinct and of police officers, but also you know bringing your flavor into that. So I was a little bit curious in terms of how, you know, when you took over the role as chief of police, uh, you know, whatever, September 2014, I guess it was interim, and then full, full-fledged... Yeah, in, in March of 15. Of oh, 15, okay. So you you have an institution that you're running, that would mean I would consider the, the police in Guelph as an institution of, of the community. So it's got its own kind of entity, 
but then you've taken over a leadership position and you have your own vision and values. So how do you weave the two together and then try to make them come to life? Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a great question. And I mean, I've always been proud of the Guelph Police and I think the organizational values have been consistent with mine. And I think it's around um, customer service, around um, professionalism, and integrity. And I think really just in whether it's about things that we become involved in, whether our policy, um, again, the customer service, the programs that uh, we become involved in, the partnerships, really trying to ensure that that is part of the focus of what we do get involved in, that it is about service, it's about uh, integrity and community trust and confidence. So the idea is that you've lined yourself up with an organization that fits your values really well so you're really just trying to make them come to life yeah. not really trying to shift I mean, I, w- I guess I was very fortunate it's not like I joined an organization that I didn't know or an organization that was in a, in a, I think in a, in a terrible spot I, Chief Larkin left in 2014 um, and in many ways I had big shoes to fill them that way oh, you literally, again, right? like, I, I mean, you many both ways. have big feet <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, but you know he's a larger than life character. But oh, yeah, you know, I, I think it's about um, an organization that was in really good shape, and we have excellent, outstanding men and women that you know both as police and as civilian members. And it's really, I think, building on that excellence and um, really encouraging the many wonderful members we have to uh, reward them, thank them, and at times, you know, I'm guilty of this. I don't do enough in that way. And you know, at times, we focus on. Um, some of our more challenging uh, employees, and, and it's trying to really encourage the many outstanding members that we do have. Yeah, it's interesting as leaders how that happens. It's like this tendency that happens across the board where, you know, that we're always trying to improve the worst and spending all the time there when, I don't know, from what I've read and, and, and heard and watched, we're supposed to be doing the opposite, putting more time into the best. But it's just a, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting tendency. So, um, kind of not so much on the leadership side, when you guys compete, fire department, other regions of police, do you guys ever do any like hockey, baseball games, that kind of stuff, or anything that's just like maybe police games or is anything like we, that? We, we have over the years, yeah. We, we had these uh, fire games. Uh, I mean, it is interesting. So who's, the, who's the better hockey, oh, yeah. hockey team? You know, I don't, I don't know if I don't know if we've played hockey. Oh, okay. I know the answer to that. No, it's all good. It's okay. Yeah, but uh, you know, it's interesting because there is that natural sort of friendly rivalry yeah, yeah. and in the various jokes. And at times, our community actually wants to see more of that. You know, let's have a tug of war between the <laughs> police and the fire. And, and you know, I've tried to at times avoid that. Whereas we do a lot of these things together, and I think it's important in emergency services that again we have these good relationships, which we do. Um, there's again, it's a it's a good natured rivalry. Yeah, for, for sure. You want it to stay that way, and uh, yeah. so is there anything coming up? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Yeah, uh, okay, fair enough. And then yeah. what about against other regions? Like, so Larkin went to Waterloo Region, right? Yeah, absolutely. And so do you to stay in contact quite a bit because there's a lot of like a fair bit. So I mean, we're involved in a, a number of groups together, but I, I'm in touch with him and uh, certainly tap into his knowledge and. Um, you know, a lot of it. One of the great things as a chief, and this is one of the things that's important because at times you you got to look for sources of information uh, to have the relationships where you can reach out to. You know, what did you do here, or uh, you know, did policies on this, or, or um, can you put me in the right direction? So there's a lot of that good, and, and I am regularly in touch with uh, you know, Chief Larkin, and um, you know, recognize uh, his leadership skills, and, and certainly he's you know the president of our. Association Chiefs of Police. Oh, I didn't realize. Yeah, cool. and, and certainly, uh, again, uh, he has a lot of resources and a lot of leadership knowledge that, uh, that I continue to, to tap into. Well, oh, you're too nice, man. I'm trying to get you to poke something right now. I know, I know you know I'm trying to do that. Um, <laughs> so, well, you know what? I mean, we, we do have St. Paddy's Day coming up, and, uh, and certainly we, I remind him regularly that we are sending all the well students over to uh, Waterloo to Ezra and uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Perfect. Yeah. Get the buses loaded up. It's it's, it's work. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's part of my budget. That's yeah. perfect. Um, so, 
one of the things that I was curious with, I mean, this is a little bit of a platform, you know, there's probably going to end up being a couple hundred people uh, getting a chance to watch this. Is there anything that you want to just give a shout out or, or let people know that's going on in, in the community Guelph, something to keep their eye open for or something that, you know, uh, some sort of initiative that you want people to know about, anything like that? You know, it's something really that, one of the things that's really changed for me in policing is some of the issues that we face as a community. We're a lot better in policing and working partnerships, collaboration, but um, mental health and addictions, you know, are some real challenges. And I think we made some real strides as a community in mental health and working with CMHA and um, tried to get a lot of attention on the impact team. But it, it's really just such a great example of, you know, a commitment to deal with a community issue and, and work together. And, you know, similarly, with we have some issues, concerns about substance use and really the work that we're, we're doing to try to address that and some of the downtown issues. Right. Um, we're just embarking on our new business plan, which will take us uh, at the end of this year for the next three years. And so we'll be reaching out to the community, looking for some feedback from them as well yeah, okay. in terms of um, what would priority be for them, uh, for the police service. Yep. And so, uh, and so that's coming down the pipe. It is, it is something that we'll be launching shortly in terms of any kind of engagement. And, um, but again, I think the collaborations that we have on so many levels with uh, various agencies in the, in the city are something challenges in, in policing in terms of uh, you know, financially and we have to we have to continue to look at new opportunities to how we deal with situations um, and it can't just be a, a policing problem on its own and I think we've got a lot better in that way and we still have some work to do. Sure, there's always work to do I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, we're involved in a lot of fun activities. I mean, that's one of the great things that I get to certainly uh, to get back to the community and really focus on some of uh, with youth Special Olympics is still near and dear. Yeah, that was happy. a big, that was a and, huge and again, success. again, it's still something as police that we're very proud. And, um, you know, I still spend a lot of time with various Olympians in, in Guelph here. And cool. it's really something that uh, just so inspiring. Yeah, it's really amazing. And that, it seemed to be a huge success it was, when it came community. to Guelph. Like, Certainly our community really got behind it. Yeah, big time. So if you were to go back and, and tell yourself something when you started this whole career in police services... Uh, that you know now, that you wish you knew then, what, what would be something you'd say to yourself? Yeah. You know, for, for me, in, in becoming chief, and I said I did you know, a lot of soul searching on that, it was something that I never got into policing to do, and even well into my career, and what I would really do differently would be uh, get out of my comfort zone, and so by becoming chief, in many ways, I was getting out of my comfort zone, but, you know, I think you have to you know, rely on the team, and trust what other people are seeing in you and really to um, it's allowed me to at times to do things that naturally I wouldn't be comfortable with but by doing it more often you certainly get more comfortable with it and uh, I would have encouraged myself a lot earlier at different times to say yeah I'll do it as opposed to find reasons not to do it sure and, and again um, you know I certainly would say that to our men and women at, at work as well at times, challenge yourself, take on those new opportunities. Um, it's okay to get out of your comfort zone, and whether it's about public speaking, whether it's about uh, getting out front of something, uh, take on new challenges because you know certainly there's many rewards that come with it, and, and just the growth that, that you get as well has is, is certainly been very rewarding. Um, you know, I've been exposed to so many just amazing people in our community and things in our community that I would not have had the opportunity to have had I not, uh, again, um, you know, taken that leap of faith and, yeah. and moved forward in this role. That's cool. Uh, we, were, we were just talking about this a couple times this week, actually, and the same idea that, you know, that going outside your comfort zone, being a bit afraid, being a bit scared, being a bit vulnerable, that's where growth happens. And so, you know, to put ourselves in situations where we can do it more often, um, gives us the opportunity to grow more and, and I, I just think that's great and an awesome message to be sending to everybody so not only yourself 34 years ago but everybody that's watching. And, and the one other piece certainly on a formal leadership level I know I spend a lot of time you know, whether focusing on my family or just the, the various skills to be the best I could whether it's investigative areas but I think to focus you know more on the formal education around leadership and, and preparation and so one of the things that certainly I'm working towards in our organization is that we do a better job of um, those development opportunities for our members for you know as far as succession planning. Cool so really try to encourage growing leaders. Absolutely. Awesome. 
Well, thank you for doing this. Yeah, it's been great. No, it's seriously. Great. It's, uh, you know what? It's uh, we have many outstanding leaders in our community, and there's many people that I, you know, I, I look uh, up to and have great dialogues with, and um, you know, share many you know, common challenges. But um, we have an outstanding community, uh, and you know, I'm proud to be and have that opportunity to have a leadership role uh, within our city. Awesome. Well, thank you for doing awesome. this. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. See you guys.